Billy Pilgrim, a man unstuck in time. He sees his fate and knows he can never change it. Everything in his life has is and always has been. Hello, Mr. Pilgrim. Hi. Can you explain your statement about becoming unstuck in time? Oh, well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to explain to you about the time I was abducted. My days. Okay, tell me more. You're on a spaceship. We're headed to Trial from Ador, so you can be studied. Please look like your hands. We only look like hands to people who can't see in the fourth dimension. We are the most advanced aliens in the universe. Hello, Mr. Pilgrim. Let me explain it like this. We are too good for you. Oh, really? Never mind. Look. We're gonna put you in a zoo so that our people can study and watch greedy creatures like you. For what reason? Because we have, we are, and we always will. I don't get it. What do you mean? This is gonna be hard for a 3D creature like you to understand. But time is not as you believe it is. It is much more. There is no beginning and end. Time is like a mountain range. It exists at different points, and it is forever. So, my life is always, and my choices are forever. I can never change them? It's a curious thing on your planet, free will. I've traveled all over the universe and Earth is the only planet to use free will. For what reason? All the others who have believed in free will have died. So it goes. Nineteen forty-five, the war prison hospital. Derby, a wise friend of Billy, is wide awake while they are listening to Lazaro rant. Lazaro talks about his need to seek revenge and the beauty of it. Hello, chaps. Oh, well, how's y'all doing then? Hey, f off. I'm gonna have you killed after the war. Oh. You made a big mistake. If anybody touches me, they better kill me, otherwise I'm gonna have them killed. You know, there's still time enough for me to kill you. If you persuade me enough. Could be the very sensible thing to do. Why don't you go f yourself? Don't think I haven't tried. I'm gonna have revenge, and that revenge is going to be sweet. It's the sweetest thing ever. People f with me, and Jesus Christ, are they ever f wrong? If the President of the United States ever did wrong with me, I'd fix him good. You should have seen what I did to a dog once. A dog? Son of a f bit me. So I got me some steak, and I got me the spring out of a clock. And then I cut up the spring and put it inside the steak. And I brought it to the dog. And I said, come here, doggy. Let's be friends. We don't need to be enemies anymore. Yeah? So I threw him the steak. And he swallowed it down in one big bowl. And then I waited around for about 10 minutes. Blood started coming out of his mouth. And he started crying and rolling on the ground. As though the knives were on the outside of him instead of on the inside. He tried to bite out his own insides. And I laughed. And I said to him, you got the right idea now, boy. Take out your guts. That's me in there with all those knives. Anyone ever ask you what the sweetest thing in life is? It's revenge. I could have anybody in the world killed for a thousand dollars plus traveling expenses. And I have a list in mind. Who's on your list? Just make sure you don't get on it. Just don't cross me, that's all. And don't cross my friends. You have friends? In the war? Yeah, I had one friend. He died in my arms though. He was my friend in the box car. His name was Ronald Weary. He died on account of that silly sucker over there. His name is Billy Pilgrim. I'd give him about 10, 5, 15 years to live his life peacefully. And then let's just hope when someone comes and knocks on his door, he gets someone else to answer it. 1945. The war. The loveliest city that the Americans had ever seen is being destroyed by incoming American bombers. 
the gigantic fountains, sure spirals that reached for the skies. Even a ring of enormous golden cupids that circled a clock tower are demolished in a matter of seconds. As the air raid siren rings, the soldiers eagerly seek shelter and eventually found a slaughterhouse. 1968, Ilium, New York. Light shift to Barbara, Billy's 22-year-old daughter, pounding Father, her fist. Daddy, open up! I know you're in there. I can hear you typing. Father, where are you? I have beautiful things to teach to her, especially about time. You answer when I call you. I, I didn't hear you. Don't lie to me, Father. You are making a laughing stock out of yourself and everybody associated with you. Are you going to force us like you did with your mother? Why does my letter make you so upset? It's all just crazy, I'm telling you. Now it is too. On the night of my daughter's wedding, I wasn't missed because the whatevers had taken me through a time warp. It's all true. There is no such planet. It, it can't be detected from Earth. If, if that's what you mean, like, Earth can't be detected from transmit of the door. As far as that goes, they're both very small and very, very far apart. Where did you get this name from? Chafrodorians? That's what the living creatures call themselves. Oh god. <laughs> Why is it you never mentioned any of this before? Before the plane crash? I, I, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> As a time traveler, he has seen his own death many times. He has described it to a tape recorder. The tape recorder is locked up with his will and some other valuables in a safety deposit box at Ilium Merchants National Bank and Trust. He says, I, Billy Pilgrim, will die, have died, and always will die on February 13th, 1976. At the time of his death, he says, he is in Chicago to address a large crowd on the subject of flying saucers and the true nature of time. Billy is speaking before a capacity audience in a baseball park which is covered by a geocentric dome. Billy predicts his own death. It is high time I was dead. Many years ago, a certain man promised to have killed me. He is an old man now living not so far from here. He has read all the publicity associated with my appearance in this fair city. He is insane. Tonight, he will keep his promise. No! No! Why? No, 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 no. Please, if you protest, if you think the death is a terrible thing, then you will not understand a word of what I have said. In closing, I would like to offer this salvation, something I learned from the child from Adorian. Hello, farewell. Hello, farewell. <laughs> no, no, it is time for you to go home to your husbands and wives and children. It is time for me to be there for a little while and live. once more in front of a chair and a microphone, a radio station. On 
Salvador, there isn't much interest in Jesus Christ. They're earthly figures who is most engaging to the Transmodorian's mind is Charles Darwin, who taught that those who die are meant to die, and those, the corpse, are improvement. The same general idea appears in the bog board by Kilgore Trout, the flying saucer creature who captures Trout's hero ask him about Darwin. They also ask him about golf. Okay, Mr. Pilgrim, I think this is enough. Nice meeting you, Mr. Pilgrim. Nice meeting you, too. I think this is all over, Mr. Pilgrim. I'm not going to go. I think this is all over, Mr. Pilgrim. If what Billy Pilgrim learned from the Trophimodorians is true, that we all will live forever no matter how dead we seem to be. I am not overjoyed. Still, if I am going to spend the rest of eternity visiting this moment and that, I am grateful that so many of these moments are nice.